Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 5. Having understood the Lewis uh, representation, let's take an overview of Lewis approach. The first advantage of the Lewis approach was, it was able to provide a picture of, a, a good picture of bonding in the molecules, right, in terms of shared pairs of electron and the octet rule. So with the octet rule, it was able to give a decent picture of the bonding. It was also uh, helpful uh, because this uh, theory helps us understand the properties of molecules to a large extent. The formation also, why sodium reacts with chlorine and why double bond is formed, single bond is formed. So it was able to explain those things pretty good. But it could not explain could not explain the behavior of molecules completely. The structure also could not explain structure also. The whole structure of the molecules. Some, because experimentally they found the structures to be triangular, they are bipyramidal or tetrahedral. These are the kind of structures they, of the molecules they saw experimentally, but these, uh, the Lewis was, approach was not able to explain these structures. Right? But it was, a decent uh, theory to understand the bonding in a very basic uh, way and uh, uh, understand the octet rule and the stability of the molecule. So there are some steps to write the Lewis dot structure. The first step is to find the total number of balanced electrons available in all the atoms. For anions, each negative ion means one extra electron and for cation one removal of electron. Then you define out how many octet electrons uh, the molecule should have using the octet tool. Subtract the valence electron from the octet electrons and divide by the number of bonding electrons by two to get the number of bonds. So this is uh, not mandatory step but if you want you can Take these steps, three steps. If you want to know the number of bonds, and then the, uh, the crucial part is to organize the atoms in such a way that the central atom and the central atom is generally the least electronegative atom. I'll tell you how to find this. You just choose a central atom and then surround the other atoms uh, that. And also, the central atom can have at the max four atoms connected to it, not more than four. For example, this is how the, I mean, see, if you see PCl5, phosphorus has 5 chlorine attached to it, right? That's what we have seen experimentally. But we are talking about the Lewis structure now. Le according to the Lewis theory, the central atom can have only at the max 4. So the Lewis theory fails for this kind of SF6 or PCl5. That's a different story. Now we are understanding the Lewis dot structure which says that you can have at the max four atoms surrounded by a central atom, right? And then once you have uh, written a pretty good structure, then you have to complete the octet of each of this outer electron. If it doesn't work, you will try a different arrangement and keep doing it uh, till you get the Lewis dot structure. So what you can do is uh, we can uh, Try doing this uh, Lewis dot structure for a few of the molecules and with that we will get comfortable, right. And please note the exception is in the octet tool is hydrogen needs two electron to uh, in the valence shell to be happy, to be stable and boron needs six electrons in the valence shell to be happy or stable. Let's try to draw the structure of NF3, Lewis dot structure. So the first thing I told you was to find the number of valence electron in nitrogen. Here it is uh, 5, we know. In fluorine we have uh, 7. So 7 into 3 because 3 molecules of fluorine. So we get something 5 plus 21, that is 26 valence electron, total valence electron. We found, want to find the number of bonds, which is again not mandatory. So just for check, I can write that. Number of bonds, nothing but P 
there are four molecules and each of these can have at the max eight electrons so eight into four is 32 minus 26 plus the electron we got by two right that is six by two that is three there will be three valence three there will be three bond in this right and again it is not mandatory thus to make uh, sure that we draw the correct structure we can have this step anyway this step is not required the next step is to find the least electronegative element it's nitrogen in our case and the fluorine elements will be surrounding these nitrogen and let's attach all these by a bond single bond so total number of valence electron we had was 26 so we have to consume all this valence electron actually so three bonds how many electrons are consumed six because each bond needs two electrons so if you see right so six electrons are consumed in three bonds so how many electrons we have 20 let's uh, make the central atom happy so i'll write the steps the first step is write skeleton or draw skeleton join all by single bond single bond right and then uh, subtract uh, subtract electrons consume consume in a single bond so in this case we had uh, total uh, 26 total V electrons we had 26 so three bonds we created we subtracted from that so we got 20 valence electron now so now the fourth step is uh, make central atom happy central atom happy so how to do that so the central atom is how many electrons now six three it had and three it got shared from three fluorines it had six electrons how many electrons it needs to be happy eight so it needs eight it had six so we need to add two electrons here correct so minus two central atom correct so we have 18 electrons pending so 18 electrons we have to satisfy these fluorines now so each fluorine if you see it has now two electrons one and one and it needs eight electron each right so 8 minus 2 is 6 so it needs 6 more electrons to be happy correct so let's add 6 electron here so how many left so this is fluorine 1 so let's let, let it fluorine 1 this 2 and this is 3 so we have 12 electrons remaining so let's add 6 more electrons to this second fluorine to make this fluorine happy so we'll have 6 electrons remaining so this six electrons we can add in this the third fluorine to make this third fluorine happy so we have zero electrons remaining. now if you see everything is happy nitrogen is happy fluorine is happy everybody is happy correct this is how you draw a Lewis structure so this was not mandatory but if you see that if you want to double check we can check the number of bonds that should be there is three and we can check in this structure the number of bond is three so what is the step let me repeat once again just draw the skeleton with the central atom as the least electronegative atom draw by a single bond right then uh, we had 26 plus electron from this we subtracted uh, six electrons because each bond consumed three two electrons and we had three bonds so we have 20 electrons now we have to use this 20 electrons to make uh, the whole molecule stable let's make the central atom stable nitrogen so we it had six electrons now in this i mean we gave it two more to make it happy so it, it it is happy now now we have 18 electrons remaining and these 18 electrons we use six each inch of the fluorines to make this fluorines happy okay. let's draw a structure for hydrogen for hydrogen you know that uh, we have one valence electron in one hydrogen so we have two hydrogen so we have Two valence electron. Correct. So let's draw two hydrogen and join it by a valence electron. 
uh, bond actually because that's what we told right we we have to just put the atoms and join them by a bond so when you join these two by these two hydrogen by bond you need one bond and one bond needs two electron right so you have zero valence electron now it should be happy by this only because we don't have any more valence electron and if you see that this hydrogen has two electron now because it has got one from this hydrogen and this hydrogen also has two electron and both are happy i told that for hydrogen you need two valence electron for boron you need six valence electron and for others you need eight valence electron as per lewis theory to make it stable let's draw the structure of water So in case of water, I have two hydrogen molecule, and each of this hydrogen molecule has one electron, valence electron. So one into two I have from hydrogen, plus from oxygen I have six valence electron. In total I have eight valence electron. So let's start with eight valence electron. The least electronegative is oxygen, so I'll put oxygen here and I'll join them by two hydrogen bonds. So each bond will need two electrons. So the total number of electrons I have used till now is four. So I'll say minus four. For two bonds, correct. So I'm left with four electrons. So let's make the central atom happy first. So the central atom now has four electrons now. One, two, three, and four. Right? Two, uh, one, two. It had and two. It shared from hydrogen. Four. It had. To make it happy, it should have eight. So eight minus four is how much? Four. So you give four electrons to this central atom, oxygen, to be happy. So you say minus four to oxygen. We give it to oxygen. So we are left with zero valence electron. So with this, the structure should be stable. If not, we have to restructure it. So if you see, the central atom is happy. Hydrogen atom is also happy. It has got two electron, and this hydrogen atom is also happy because it got two electron. So I can say that this is a stable structure of water. Correct. So we had eight valence electron. We gave a, a, we created a bond just to start with that required four electrons, and then we made a central atom happy. It required four more electrons, and we have zero valence electron now. And now, if you see each, all these atoms are happy. That means my structure is correct. Else, I have to restructure it. So now, if you see, everybody is happy. So everybody is happy. Are you not worried? Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.